Joe, the Subway series is a series that seems to mean an awful lot to fans, but how much do you enjoy this series, and do you have any memory in particular from either managing or playing in it? I, I enjoy um, the series. I, I think it's great for the city. I think it's, I think it's fun for the players. Um, it's something different, and there's obviously emotion in it. Probably the, the game that I remember the most was Tech scoring from first on the, on the pop-up to second base, probably more than any game. Um, it was a crazy night, and... But I enjoy it. Anything with uh, Curtis Granderson? I know you're scheduled to see the doctor Doc today. tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow? Yeah. And Jabba had said in the clubhouse he expects to be activated tomorrow. Yeah. Is that the plan? I mean, that's our plans, but it's something that, you know, we'll talk about. But that's our plans, yeah. Joe, anything from the guys who were uh, down in Tam uh, Tampa today? the uh, extended spring games? Yeah, uh, Tex had five, A, five ABs, five innings. Uke had five ABs, five innings. Um, Nooney didn't do anything. Alex took BP on the field and ground balls. Uh, Andy's preparing for his, you know, simulated game tomorrow. Is there anyone I'm missing? I don't think so. I'm sure there is. Oh, Pineda? Um, he probably has a schedule start coming up pretty soon again. I'm not sure which day, though. Should be 70 pitches, I think, or so. 60 or 70 pitches. Joe, with the emergence of Kelly, what, if you do activate Chamberlain, where would you use him? Oh, I mean, Java was the guy that we used in the seventh inning. Uh, you know, if Robbie needs a day off, I wouldn't be afraid to use him in the eighth inning. Uh, it just gives us more depth and you know, with a lot of the close games that we have been in, it's 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 good to have another power arm like that where you can share the workload. Joe, can you hark back to that first Subway Series game? What's sort of the difference between that 1997 game leading up to today versus pregame now? And you actually had three hits in that game. When you think back on that, I guess just what's the, the overall change in atmosphere between the first and now? Well, I think the atmosphere is... is still really good i think anytime something happens for the first time that people are excited about the atmosphere is going to be a little bit different but um i think the atmosphere is still great i i really do uh you know i'm anxious to see what it's going to be like tonight it's a holiday and i'm sure people went a lot of different places but i'm anxious to see how it's going to be tonight and but as i said any anytime something happens for the first time there's usually a bigger buzz show the met people who aren't in the room and wanted to know if you've seen Harvey much yet and what you think of him? Uh, just watching him on TV, he's impressive. Uh, I actually watched his first start last year. I believe it was against Arizona, right? Uh, yeah, and uh, I called my buddy. And I said, he's, he's a Mets fan. I, have, I told him, I said, you have something to be excited about. This kid's got a great arm, um, and he's been impressive all year long. I've seen some of his games on TV. I saw the game that he pitched against the Phillies. I think it was a Sunday night game. So we'll get a chance to see him in person tomorrow. He's got a good swing, too. Joe, uh, what, what are the status on all the players that you gave status reports on before in terms of how far away are they from being activated? Well, I mean, that's that's hard to say. I, I'm asked that question a lot. Uh, it's probably every day. Um, when they're ready, that's that's when they'll be here. And, and part of that goes into when we think they're physically ready, but part of it is when they feel that they're physically and mentally ready. Because, you know, a guy like Tex hasn't really had a spring training. A guy like Curtis didn't really have a spring training. You know, if you're out for a couple of weeks and you go on the DL – you know, you're only out a couple of weeks. You know, maybe you need two or three days of at-bats or something, or maybe even only one day. But when you're out as long as they have been, I think they have a feeling when they feel like, you know what, I'm ready to go. I feel like my left-handed swing is good. I feel like my right-handed swing is good. It's time. And that's hard to predict because that's a feeling that they get, not us. What about We've said after the All-Star break at some point, I don't have an exact date. Yeah, I mean, he's yeah, he's doing everything we expect him to do. Yeah. Yeah, Joe. Um, as a follow-up to that, um, there's been a lot of at least speculation that both Tex and Euclid could be back by the weekend. Is that overly optimistic, in your opinion? 
Um, I know there's been a lot of talk about that. Uh, Texas is going to play again tomorrow in a simulated game, and then he's scheduled to go to Trenton. Wednesday and Thursday, and I think those are the only two days that they're home. I think they go on the road, so I think people are speculating that maybe when that's up. As I've said, it's how they feel, and, and when we feel and they feel that they're ready, it, it has to be both both sides, not necessarily one. And Tex feels good. Um, he feels pretty good. Uh, but it's trickier for him because he needs left-handed and right-handed at bats, and does he feel like he can get enough of both? Uh, you played his first, you know, three innings and five innings. He played five innings today, and he is getting closer. But with Uke in his back, we have to know that, in a sense, that he can go back to back to back, and we got to get through that. Well, given the production you're already getting out of first base and third base, <clears throat> is this going to be one of your harder decisions this year when you have to figure out what you're going to do you there? You know, I I'll continue to take the approach. I'll handle it when I have to handle it. Right now, i got to focus on the guys in the room. We're hoping that we get these guys back soon, uh, but I'll worry about that when it happens. Joe, with the way Hafner's been swinging the bat lately, how big of a loss is it not being able to pencil him into your lineup the next week? Yeah, I, that's a big bat to lose. I mean, that's the, one of the things that you, know, you have to deal with when you're an American League team and you strictly have a DH and you come to a National League ballpark because usually when you strictly have a DH, they're in the middle of the order. And the National League team has to deal with they have to ask someone to DH who probably hasn't DH too much when they come to our ballpark so we both have to deal with something but you look for that one spot the key spot in the game that you can use him and he can really make an impact Joe when you watched Harvey is that because you're a fan of the game or you think potentially you could face him what's your reason when you're when you checked him out so much well the first time I watched it was because I was a fan of the game and I have interest in New York baseball since I live here basically. Um, and now I watch games because of I know that we're playing them fairly quickly or we're going to see them at some point and I, you know, maybe you pick something up uh, or you get an idea what they have and you start thinking about matchups in your head. Um, but it's usually teams that we're going to play. I try to tune into those games if I can. Oh. Well, I mean, we know that he's got outstanding stuff and we'll see what happens. Joe, regarding to Shara, when he comes back, will he be an everyday player, or are you going to work him in slowly? No, I, I expect him to be an everyday player, but I don't anticipate that I would play him, you know, six, seven days in a row right away. With Curtis, I think I played him three and gave him a day off, and then you try to get to four or five and then a day off, that sort of thing. Joe, you, um, last few years it's been a three and three Subway Series, three in your park and three here. To do it all in one week, in one swoop, four games, do you prefer that? Uh, it's it's a little bit easier probably on our staff <laughs> preparing uh, because you see them right in a row. I've never had a problem with how many games you play. The only issue that I have is I always think it should be an odd number so that there's a winner every year. That's, that's my only issue. So I don't really care when we play them um, and how many, but I think there should be an odd number. Considering the circumstances with the injury and everything, are has what Mariano done surprised you at all? No, uh, because of what he hurt. Uh, when he got hurt last year, he was throwing the baseball pretty well. Um, and he hurt his knee. Now, if he would have hurt his shoulder or his elbow, I, I, you know, I, I would be surprised with what he's done. But I felt that if his knee healed, he would be pretty much the same guy that we've seen year after year after year. Yeah, I know his velocity's dropped since the first time I caught him in 1996. But because it was, it was not his arm or his shoulder, I wasn't really concerned. Do you think not having the wear and tear last year on his arm helped? Oh, I'm sure it can. I mean, you hear players talk about, you know, they only have so many bullets in their arm. And he didn't use a lot last year.